Good morning and welcome to our adult Bible study. So glad that you could uh, join us today. Uh, we're going to continue our look in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 1. Um, and, and as we look at this, just realize this, there's a lot of questions and a lot of things that you're going to have. And I want to answer those questions as much as I possibly can. So uh, I encourage you to text me, email me, Facebook me, uh, whatever method of uh, of communication you want to utilize, uh, let me know. Uh, even if it's just going and sitting down somewhere and meeting you, uh, we can do that. Um, what we do is when, we, when we're looking at the Word of God, we have to realize that there's a lot of things that we're going to have to grasp. Revelation is one of those interesting books because John is the beloved. John was the one that was at Golgotha. John was the one that seen Jesus crucified. He's seen Him resurrected. And today we're going to see that He's going to see Jesus in glory. And, and, and as we look at that, I, I want you just to kind of remember and look at what John has gone through in his life. And now look at what he's going to see. We're going to look at uh, Revelation uh, chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 9 through 13. It's going to be our uh, text this morning. Uh, so let's have a word of prayer and we'll dive into our study. Father, we want to say thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to come before you to open our eyes to your word. That, Father, you may take your word, apply it to our lives. God, that you would strengthen us to do the service in which you've called us for. Father, help us to be good servants and to do our due diligence in this world, to make you known and to let others see the glory that you have pre prepared before us. And God, that they would walk in it. It's in your name. Amen. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 9 says this, I, John, both your brother and your companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. In verse 9, he says, I, John, he gives us a couple of things about uh, identifying himself. He says, I'm both your brother and companion. I'm both your brother and companion in the tribulation, in the kingdom, and patience of Jesus Christ. John connects these three events because he wants us to realize that this is also something similar to what Paul said in Acts chapter 14, verse 22. As he says, he wants us to realize that tribulation is coming, but so is the kingdom. And get grateful. the gratefulness that we should have is that Jesus is patient with us. Now, John also opens our eyes to where he is and why he's writing and what's going on in his life. He says, John was writing from the island of Patmos. And, and, and what we have to realize is Patmos is a, a rocky island, it's a small island. It was an island that was used to exile criminals. And, and John, this was what his fate was. It said he was exiled to Patmos. And why was he exiled there? It says, for the word of God. You know, John was one that, that he spoke the Word of God. He wanted people to know the Word of God. He wanted people to use the Word of God. And, and, and John was always at the forefront of making sure that the Word of God was known. Matter of fact, the Gospel of John is, is uh, one of the most emphatic books that we read and how we see God uh, portrayed there as the Son of Man. But, but also he says this, it wasn't just the Word of God. It says, and the testimony of Jesus Christ. As we look at the testimony of Jesus Christ, we have to realize that the testimony of Jesus Christ was simple. Jesus was born of a virgin. He uh, died on a cross, a sinless uh, sacrifice for all of humanity. He was raised victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And the testimony of Jesus Christ was offensive not only to the Jewish culture, but also to the Roman culture that wanted to abandon what Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus' testimony and the mission that he had set out for. John also says this, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. 
Uh, I, I like that because John was simply stating this, is that, that the state of the Spirit is simply means this, is the outer world has been shut out and the inner and higher life of the Spirit is being taken fully on. And basically what he's saying is this, I shut the world completely out so my mind could focus on Christ. Think about that for a minute. Well, if you want to experience God in a, in a mighty way, then what we have to realize is this, is we need to come to a point in our life where we're willing to shut the voices of the world out so that we can embrace what God wants to say to us through His Word. And I guarantee you, if you read the Word of God, the Spirit of God is going to convict you. It's going to speak to you. It's going to show you that God Himself has a lot for us and that we have the ability to know God and to know what God wants us to do. Now, uh, as children of God, it's important for us to be led by the Spirit. And not only to be led by the Spirit, but to walk in the Spirit. Uh, we, oftentimes we say we want to be led, but, but let's just be honest. We don't want to be led someplace we don't want to go. Uh, how many teachers want to go to school? How many kids want to go to school? How many adults want to go to work? Uh, you think about it, we can lead people to where they're supposed to be, but we cannot make them walk that direction. And as a pastor, that's one of the things that I have noticed in my life is that I can't make people do anything. All I can do is lead them to walk in the Spirit. But ultimately, it's a personal decision to walk in the Spirit of God. He says this, I heard behind me a loud voice as a trumpet. Now John, as he hears this voice, he says that he was in the Spirit. He was, had shut the world completely out. He was focusing, focusing his life on God. And he hears a voice as a trumpet. We know the trumpet is an, uh, an amazing thing because what we know about the trumpet is when the trump of God shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise. And, and that's going to be a wonderful day. It's going to be a powerful day. It's going to be a momentous day. But notice what happens when this loud trumpet goes off. It says, uh, saying, I am, verse 11, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to uh, Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Uh, notice that the first thing that he says is, uh, the loud voice states something. I am the Alpha and Omega. What we have to realize is if we go back to verse number 8, we realize that Jesus spoke by saying this, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end, says the Lord who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The amazing thing that we see here is this, is that once again, God through Jesus Christ identifies Himself as what? The Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. It's, it's important for us to realize that God is and God was and God will always be the first and foremost. Notice what he says. He says, uh, this is a loud voice saying, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. And this is the instructions that John receives at this very moment. He says, what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches. And that points us to something big. It points us to something big. This is the Lord speaking to us. This is the Lord writing in red. I, I know a lot of you guys have a, a red letter Bible. I want you all to see. Today I'm actually using a red letter Bible. Um, most of the time I do not because uh, I, I, and that's a different story. But, but basically what I want you to realize is this, is that He sent this letter uh, to the churches. And what we have to realize is this. He says, what you see, write. You know, how many of us um, have ever uh, sat in a meeting and had somebody uh, writing out what was said in said meeting? You know, what we have to realize is this, is that John was just reporting what he saw. And that's what we're going to see as we open the Word. We're going to see that John does nothing more than write what he saw. So he's instructed, write what you see and send it to these seven churches. In verse 12, he says this, And then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet and girded about his chest with a gold band. 
This gets really interesting and, and, and it's exciting. It's because he says that he turns and he sees seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven golden lampstands was one like the Son of Man. Now, uh, what I want you to realize is this, is we're going uh, uh, to unpack what the seven lampstands are later. But right here, right now, what I want us to focus on is the description that we're given of the Son of Man. The Son of Man is the form that John had seen uh, enduring the agony of Gethsemane. He was the one that he seen that was in shame and anguish on Calvary. He's the one that he seen glorified as he rose victorious uh, as the Son of Man, not merely just as the Son of God. And it is the result of his humiliation now that he sees God glorified in glory as the Son of Man. Now notice the second thing that he says. He says, as he seen the Son of Man, Verse 13, he says, clothed with him garments down to the feet and girded about his chest with a gold band. This is an amazing statement because what we have to realize is this, is the garment down to his feet marks a high symbol or a high rank uh, of, of, of who he is. But also we have to realize this, a garment down to the feet was a symbol of a priesthood. Uh, now, not only was the garment the emblem of his priesthood, we, we have to compare this to Exodus chapter 28, verses 2, 4, and 31. It's in Aaron's robes. Uh, were girded, uh, were, were for glory and beauty, and they, they, they were a sign of the royalty, the insignia of royalty and the priesthood and the characteristics of Christ were a foreshadow of the priesthood after Melchizedek. Uh, his being uh, in the midst of the, the candlesticks could show us one thing. Jesus was now the king and the priest. The priesthood was one that uh, he had exercised over since his ascension, and therefore he wore the emblems that it bears. But also, we see this is that he was girded about. Uh, 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 he was girded about the chest with a gold band. Now, what I want you to understand about this gold band is that he was girded with. Uh, uh, it shows us this. It shows us the framework that uh, that shows us his power, righteousness, and faithfulness of Christ are the girdle. Of Christ. The high priest was the one that was always girded about his chest. And as we see that he was girded with interwoven gold, it says that this is Christ, uh, uh, it is all the gold, it is a type. And the type that we see is this He is the righteous priest atoning for the sins of mankind. Next week, we're going to look at verses 14 through verse number 20, it shows us that, uh, it gives us the physical description of Jesus. Not just what He wore, but it gives us a physical description in verses 14 through verse 20. And it's my prayer, it's my desire that you'll take just a few moments this week, you'll read Revelation 1, verse number 14 through verse number 20, as we get ready to unpack that next week, uh, as we look continuously at the book of Revelation. Isn't it amazing that God this week is even unfolding the events of, of Him coming, uh, of His second coming? I just want you to realize one thing. We need to reveal Christ to a lost and dying world. We need to reveal Christ to people so that they may know Him, serve Him, and trust Him. Let me have a word of prayer with you. There will be no Zoom call tonight, but we're going to have a word of prayer uh, and, and, and we'll, we'll talk more later. Let's pray. Father, we just say thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity that we've had to study your word. Father, I pray and uh, ask that, God, you would be with us, that you would lead us, and that, Father, you would guide us to be who you want us to be. And, Father, as you reveal yourself to us, may we see that you are that priest interceding on our behalf, that, Father, you are there in the temple making intercession for us day and night. Oh God, help us not to treat your grace carelessly. Help us to realize that we've been bought with a price and therefore we should glorify you. Oh God, help us. Lead us and guide us. It's in your name. Amen.